Before we start off this video, I just want to mention that I'm going to be hosting a Zamorak Boss Mass on Sunday, January 27th at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want all the information about this, I have a pace bin linked down below. Basically, this has all the information for you guys. Uh, the time, the clan chat, Twitch. I'm going to be streaming it on Twitch as well. Uh, the Discord if you want to join. It's open to the public, so you could actually just bring anyone. They don't need to be in the clan chat or Discord. Anyone's welcome to join us. There's a little basic gear setup for beginners. If you want to see here a guy, I was like, it's actually what I'm still wearing now. I just took the picture. You could wear something like this. You know, Arclight is good if you have it. You could bring a whip. Uh, DDS, you know, super combats. Make sure you bring some antidotes. These are very good anti-poison in case you get hit. Other things, you know, Twitch link is down there. You can watch it if you don't want to join. And basically, I think this is a very good way for low levels to learn some PVMing. You know, you could do some bossing. This is a very easy way to do God Wars in a mass setting. And uh, it's also good if you're experienced. Maybe you can get some kills. And I'm expecting to see a lot of Zami Spears and a few pet drops as well. So hope you guys can make it. If not, I'll do more of these in the future and I'll see you guys there. Hey guys, up it's Andrew AJT, and today we're going to be talking about the top 10 best updates in old school RuneScape history. Now, this was a very tough list to make because there have been a lot of good updates over the six year lifespan of this game. So, today we're going to be talking about the top 10 updates that are pretty much no brainer updates that everybody wanted and everybody likes. I mean, you might find a couple guys here and there who say, oh no, I don't want that update. But for the most part, everybody loves these updates. So, let's jump right in. So to start off the list at number 10, we're going to go all the way back to January 30th of 2014, and this is the automatically rejoined clan chat update. Now, this was an extremely important update because it was super annoying to not have this update when the game came out. Basically, if you were a member of the clan chat, like let's say you're a member of my clan chat, Andrew AJT62, every single time you would log out, you would be removed from the clan chat. So when you log in, you have to manually go in and type join clan chat, and type in the name again and rejoin it. You'd have to do this every single time you hopped worlds, when you logged in, when you did anything. So most people would not remember to rejoin their clan chat, and it was extremely annoying for every single clan owner, including myself. So this was a huge update. I even made a video at the time, best update ever, because this was just a great thing back then, and I'm glad we still have it. So for number nine on the list, we're going to talk about one of the biggest expansions in old school RuneScape history back in March 2014. Now, the backstory to Wilderness Rejuvenation was that back in the days of RuneScape Classic and RuneScape 2, Jagex did try to add things to make the Wilderness a rewarding place to go for non-PKers for a lot of loot and such. They added things like the KBD, Chaos Elemental, Clue Scrolls, but these updates did not hold up over time. So in 2014, Jagex decided to add new things to the Wilderness, such as Callisto, Vedion, Venonatus, Dark Crabs, Black Chinchampas, the Resource Area, Ents, the Fountain of Rune, and this was all in one update, and this gave so much new life to the Wilderness, and it's been expanded upon since, but I think this is just one of the greatest changes this game has ever seen. The Wilderness is a huge area, and now there's so many reasons to visit it, and now there's more PKers, there's more people training combat, it's just so awesome. So for number 8 on this list, we're going to be talking about the middle mouse camera update. Now, I couldn't find out when exactly this update happened, but I do remember that Back in 2013 when the game came out, this was an update that was pulled and it actually failed. And maybe around a year later, they pulled it again and it did pass. And funny enough, I actually voted no for it the first time. Then I voted yes for it the second time. So many people actually changed their mind on updates like this when the game came out. And everyone was at first very conservative about new updates. And then people kind of loosened up after a while. But basically, this was an update that allows you to control the camera with the middle mouse button, which you can see here I'm doing. Before, the only way to do this was the arrow keys, which kind of move the camera like this, which is quite slow and not efficient either. And basically, if you tried to use the middle mouse camera before this was a released update, it would basically just do this. It would click on the ground. It wouldn't actually move the camera. You know, I'm trying here, but it's not working. So this was a really great update. I mean, the camera movement now is so smooth. Of course, they've improved it over the years. Now you can zoom in and out as well, which is quite nice. I actually use the thumb button on my mouse to control the camera, which is very comfortable for me to do. For number seven on this list, we're going to talk about the Smoking Kills update in December of 2013 and January of 2014. It came out in a couple batches. You're probably saying to yourself, what the hell is the Smoking Kills update? Well, basically, Smoking Kills is the name of a quest around 2008 in pre-EOC that added a ton of new features for Slayer. This included reward points and the Slayer Helm, things that Old School RuneScape did not have when the game came out. 
So I did 85 Slayer pretty quickly after Old School RuneScape came out in February 2013, and there was no Slayer points. If you wanted to skip a task, you would have to go to Turiel and go kill Banshees or something for a little while, and then you could get a new task from Duradel. And this really sucked, and there was also awful tasks. You would get tasks like go racks and things like that, where you wouldn't even know where the hell to go find them. You'd have to go look it up. Just these crazy tasks that nobody wanted to do. So in the Smoking Kills update, they basically added all those rewards, including Slayer points, which allowed you to skip tasks. There was a Slayer ring, which has a lot of great teleports, and also the Slayer helmet. So you didn't have to use a black mask. You could combine things like a nose peg and earmuffs into the Slayer helmet to make it all in one. Of course, this later was able to be imbued for range and magic boosts, and also Neve was added to the game. Also the Stronghold Slayer Cave, which you're seeing the original version of here before it was updated. Incredible update for Slayer. Number six on the list is the Static Respawn Timer update. This happened on July 17th, 2014. Basically everybody knows that if I cut this tree down right here, it's going to come back within a certain amount of time. But what determines how long it's going to take? Well, what if I told you that back in the day, it actually depended on how many people were in the world you were on. The more people in the world, the faster it's going to respawn. And this was the case for every resource and boss. So the more people are in the world, the faster the tree's going to come back. Same with things like iron ore, you know, power mining, and bosses. Like if you're going to go kill KBD, if you want it to respawn quicker, you're going to have to go to a world with more people. And the problem is, back then when there wasn't that many players, the only world that was ever close to full was World 2. So basically you could only efficiently do every boss and skilling method on one world. It was insane because chances are there would already be someone on World 2 and you would have to go to a world with 300 people and you'd have to wait around minutes for things to respawn. It was ridiculous, it made Slayer very difficult to do, and this update basically made it so every world had the same respawn timer and it was quite quick. So very very important update for the playability of this game number five on our list was also released on july 17th 2014 what a great day in runescape history this was the boss pets update which allowed certain bosses to drop miniature versions of themselves loyal to the player that would follow behind you these are extremely rare and they're very fun to go for most people consider them pretty prestigious to have certain ones and people like me spend a lot of time hunting for these pets because it's just so much fun Normally in RuneScape you would kill bosses for money, but this added a second incentive to kill many bosses, even very difficult ones or ones that are not very profitable. People just love going for these pets and they're just so much fun to look for and collect and people just in general love collecting things and these are one of the most fun collectible things in the game because they're quite hard to get. Some of them are quite a challenge, but when you do get them, it's probably more exciting and satisfying than anything else in old school. One update that is definitely deserving of a top 4 spot is the Iron Man update from October 13th, 2014. This was an update that allowed you to create a special account called an Iron Man where you can have an account that is not allowed to trade or interact with other players in almost any way possible. So basically everything you do on this account has to be done by yourself. You have to get your own materials to do skilling. You have to get your own weapons and armor to kill bosses. It's quite fun, and even though I've never played this mode myself, I understand that this has been a great update for content makers in the game. I mean, you see streamers creating Iron Man accounts all the damn time. You also have the Ultimate Iron Man, which can't use a bank, and now the Hardcore Iron Man, which cannot die, or if you do die, you lose your Hardcore status. So this is a pretty fun update, and it really does change the way people play the game, and many of the coolest achievements in this game have been done on Iron Man accounts. Number three on this list came out on December 5th, 2013, and this is the Rooftop Agility Courses. This was a massive update that allowed you to do agility on almost any roof of any town in RuneScape. This was pretty cool. I remember I always wanted to go up on the roofs in games ever since Super Mario 64 let you go onto Peach's Castle. And it's kind of like a same sort of thing. You can go on the roof and there's a lot of fun things up here, namely agility, which is not so fun, but this makes it a little bit more fun. And the rewards from this are amazing. The graceful outfit lets you use less run energy and it also makes you restore your own run energy faster. And also my favorite are the stamina potions which I don't know what I would do without and they're why this update is so high on this list. They let you run for longer without using so much run energy. This was actually an update suggested by this guy Big Red Japan who was just a player who really liked agility and he suggested the update and they actually put it in. So shoutouts to that guy. 
For the runner-up spot on this list, we have the Grand Exchange. This was released on February 26, 2015, and was actually quite a controversial update at the time. As you guys mostly all know, this is an update that allows you to sell and buy items through a kind of grand digital marketplace in-game that means you don't actually have to find someone to trade with. This was huge at the time because before this, the best method of trading was the Zybez website, where you'd have to post an offer on there, almost like a form post. You'd have to wait for people to PM you. You'd have to go meet them in-game. It took quite a long time, and although there was a certain charm to the player interaction, it was highly inconvenient, and you could easily spend half your time in-game just trying to buy and sell things. Now with the GE, it's super easy and super quick. And you could actually see the prices change dramatically over time, in part due to the GE because of merchanters, flippers, all those things. You could see here I'm actually struggling to sell a Dragon Hunter crossbow for around 24 mil. To be fair though, that was before it was buffed. I also sell the Ellie for 333 mil. Ouch. I think I paid like 550 mil to buy it back months later. But I do buy the Twisted Bow for 977 mil, which I think has paid off over time. Coming in at the number one spot on this list is the God Wars Dungeon, released October 17th, 2013. This was a huge update for the game back then that many people thought we were never even going to get. Jagex was saying it would be too difficult to implement, they didn't really have any data to base it on, but somehow they pulled it off, and very early in Old School RuneScape's life cycle as well, when it was extremely challenging for them to make updates like this, somehow they pulled it off. This was an insane update, and while it was pretty similar to the God Wars dungeon that we had pre-EOC, there were some pretty cool additions, such as the Armadal Crossbow drop from Saradomen and the Staff of the Dead drop from Zami. And those four bosses are incredibly good to kill, and six years later they are still very, very good to kill. They're very profitable, they're very fun, and there's also other monsters to kill in here like Spiritual Mages on a Slayer task, which drop things like Dragon Boots. We got God Swords from this update, Bandos Armor, Armadil Armor, the Saradoman Sword. There's so many awesome things that it's released with this update, and also the environment itself, the melted snow, the fact that this place has been frozen for thousands of years and now it's thawing. It's just such a cool environment and probably my favorite place in the entire game. One thing I remembered when I was researching the God Wars dungeon release for this video was actually Jagex used to host this newsletter that ran for, I think, just two issues, which actually had player-written submissions. As you see here, people would actually write articles. Sometimes JMods would write articles, as you see here, by Mod Ash and Mod Nexus, like DevBlog, Nightmare Zone. This is how old this is. This was June 2013, uh, Holiday Items, things like that, Rotten Potato. Uh, but I actually wrote an article for this thingy. I'll show you. I think it's down here. Yeah, here we go. God Wars Dungeon, yes or no? And I actually wrote about whether or not we should have God Wars in Old School RuneScape, which was a very controversial thing at the time. So if you guys actually want to read this, I think it's actually pretty well written for me as a teenager in 2013 writing this. I'm sure some of you guys want to read my article, but I don't want to link the website. It seems to advertise gambling websites now, so I actually made an Imager post with just the full article. If you guys want to read it, I'll throw that in the description. It's kind of interesting. Also, one quick point that I thought about while thinking about this was... Why do we never get any bosses like this anymore? Why do we always have to get bosses that are either solo only or instanced or slayer only? Why can't we get bosses like the God Wars or Wildy bosses where you could just show up with your friends to a certain part of the map and kill the boss without having to go through something that feels like a computer simulation? Not that there's anything wrong with those new type of bosses, but like why couldn't the Hydra just exist somewhere on a map and you can go kill it with your friends? Why does it have to have so many requirements to kill? unlike all those old bosses, which are still extremely popular. Just my thought. If you want to learn a little bit more about the early days of Old School RuneScape, I actually did make a video on this very topic not super long ago. I'll put a link to this in the description, as well as in the end screen. So there you have it. Those are the top 10 best updates in Old School RuneScape, in my opinion. This was a very tough list to make. I had to do a lot of research, and I had to cut out so many things that I wanted to include on the list. Maybe I need to make a part 2 of this video at some time, another top 10 updates. Let me know if you guys want to see that in the comments. Maybe somewhere down the road I'll make that. Also leave suggestions for updates you think should be included in future lists if I do make another video like this. Obviously I didn't even scratch the surface of newer updates like raids that have changed the game drastically. If you did enjoy this video I'd appreciate it if you left a like. It's the best way to help out the channel and it only takes a couple seconds. As I mentioned in the start we are doing the Zami Mask this Sunday so feel free to check out the description for the pay spin link for all the information regarding that. Hope to see you guys there. 
You can also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and you could also click the bell to get notifications whenever I do upload, which is typically every late Tuesday afternoon. You can also feel free to join our Andrew AJT62 clan shop that'll be up on screen, just our general discussion, PVM, PVP, anything goes type of clan chat. Even if you just want to hang out, feel free to hop in. Even if you can't join the clan chat, you can feel free to join the clan discord down below with the link in the description. We have over 500 members now, it's one of the most active RuneScape discords out there. And you can invite your friends to either of these, they are public channels. In other words, everybody is welcome even if they haven't heard of me, because the way I see it, the more the merrier. The more people we get, the better it is. You can also follow me on Twitter down below, and I'll follow you back if you play RS. You can follow me on Twitch down below, and I'll be streaming the Zamrak Boss Mask this Sunday, so you can definitely check that out. And you could support us on Patreon down below if you'd really like to. Your support on there is greatly appreciated. It would help me spend more time editing videos and less time working my day job. But your support is optional. You guys just watching the videos is all the support I really need. So thank you guys so much for watching. Leave your suggestions for future videos in the comments. And I'll see you guys next week or on Sunday if you're going to hop in for the Zamrak Boss Mass. Thanks, guys.